So we're back to talk about power. Let's review quickly what we did earlier. We started off with a circuit with 120 volts applied to it, a frequency of 60 hertz, a resistor of 200 ohms, and an inductor with an inductance, L for inductance, of one Henry. We figured out all the rest. Because the frequency was 60 hertz, we could figure out what the reactance, the inductive reactance of the inductor was, 377 ohms. We combined that with the resistive ohms using Pythagoras, ohms, ohms, to get our total ohms. The combination of resistance and reactance gives us impedance, Z, impedance. Once we had our impedance, we could figure out our current because we had ohms and volts. Let's figure out some amps. We knew our amps would be the same throughout the circuit for it's a series circuit. And so we just put that value on each component. I didn't need to put I, T, I, R, I, L. I could have just put I, but just to be clear, these are the inductive values, these are the resistive values, these are the total circuit values. So, I put those on just to clarify, but we know that in a series circuit, current will be the same throughout. And I told you that's why current is in phase in all the components, and voltage isn't. So you'll notice there's no triangle for current because it's the same. Current is all going on the horizontal line. Okay, but once we had a current here and a current there, we could figure out voltage drop. Ohms times amps is volts. Ohms times amps is volts. And then we looked at 105 and 56 and we said, that's a problem. That's way more than 120. But then the light bulb went off and we said, try the triangle bus. And we did. We put 56 here, all the resistive values on the horizontal, the reactive components on the vertical, 56, 105.6. Did our little Pythagoras and it come to 120. Beautiful. Now we're dealing with power. Okay. Again, it's Ohm's law. And so far, you've worked with resistors. So you know power as watts. And what we're going to call that now is true power. True power. That's the working power, the active power, the true power. It's doing the real work, the heating, the lighting, the motion. The reactive takes power throws it back, takes power, throws it back. Kind of all at the wrong time. It's like digging a hole just to fill it up again and dig another one here and, 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 and keep doing that process back and forward. Taking power, throwing it out, taking, throwing it out. Okay, so it's reactive power. It's not doing any real work. This is the true power. True power, reactive power, makes sense, reactive, because it's in a reactive component. True power here, and the combination of those two, hint, hint, wink, wink, got the triangle. The combination of those two powers, Pythagorasly, is going to yield apparent power. Because at the circuit source, I see this many volts and this many amps. It appears that's what the circuit's using. The technical terms is that this is consumed power, right? This is kind of wasted power. So chuck it in, chuck it out. But we have to provide at the source enough power for the real work that's getting done, the resistive part of the load, plus for the stuff that's chucking around the place. We've got to provide all that. Okay, we'll get into this guy in a little bit. So let's calculate those out. Using Ohm's law, I could use any two of these to get power, couldn't I? Volts times amps is probably the most common. I squared 
R would also do it. Or E squared over R, right? I can use any of those combinations there, here, or here. So let's do it up here and then confirm and see if those values add up with the triangle as well. And let's see if they are proportional as well. Calculate them out. Start with the reactive. Why not? Right to left. Isn't that how we do it? So, volts times amps. Think about that for a second. How about 29.57? We'll go with that. And this becomes a question, what are we going to call these? get to that in a moment. Let's calculate these guys. 56 times 0 0.28. 15.68. And over here, my power, volts times amps, about 33.6. You know, I got to write that just a little smaller. So what are we going to call these? True power, you guys called power watts before. So let's call that watts, because that's the type of power you're dealing with over a resistor. And that's what it is. True power is measured in watts. And then it'll make more sense if I go back here and, and I go, well, apparent power, it's basically how many volts and how many amps am I putting into the circuit? So can I just call them volt amps? That's what I multiply is volts times amps. Let's just call them volt amps. They get the fancy name, watts. But over here, again, I multiplied volts times amps. But I can't just call them volt amps because there is, I don't want to get them confused with over here. So I'm going to call them volt amps reactive, VARs little s for plural, VARs. And then sometimes we put a little L. This will come into play when you get further into AC. We'll deal with some other components and capacitors. But these are my VARs inductive. 29.57 VARs inductive or inductive VARs. Volt amps reactive. So again, those are important terminology issues. Let's write them up here. The resistive portion, the true power, 15.68 watts. That's the resistive portion, the true power, watts. On the inductor, we've got our VARs, 29.57. And I'll just put a sub L, so we know they're inductive. Again, here, that's the only reactive component we have, but later on, we'll be combining other ones. And we think that's 33.6, but do our little Pythagoras Right, what would, that, what would that be? That would be uh, apparent power, APP for apparent, not to be confused with applied voltage. We'll call that ET or ES, source voltage, total voltage, applied voltage, we apply that. But this is apparent power. It might equal, we could just do volts times amps, that's what we did here, but we could also take our watts, Square them plus our VARs and square them, right? This side of the triangle plus that side of the triangle. Square those two values, take the square root of, and boom. Confirm me. I think we're right. And unfortunately, I didn't leave enough room, so we'll call them VA, volt amps. So there's our power. 33.6 volt amps. 15.68 watts, 29.57 VARs, volt amps reactive of the inductive variety. So what's this other thing I've got here? It's my power factor, which is really a form of efficiency for a circuit. How efficient is the circuit? Let's say that. Remember, this stuff does the real work. This stuff just kind of chucks it around the place. So we still, I mean, we use the magnetic fields, don't get me wrong, we use that stuff in there, but we gotta provide that power. So, but if that's the real work that's getting done is 15.68 watts worth of real work, but I've gotta put in this much to get that done, 
That's not very efficient. Power factor is equal to my watts over my VA. Watts divided by VA. It's efficient. How much real work am I getting done for what I have to put into the circuit? And right here, that's a little less than half. If I take watts over VA, that's 15.68 over 33.6. That's less than half. I think comes out to about 46.7%. You're gonna get it in a decimal format, but we tend to put it in percent. Power factor. True power over apparent power yields power factor. That's my percent efficiency. For all the energy I'm putting into this thing, all the power, let's call it, all the power I'm putting into this thing, 46% of it is doing the real work. Down the line, third year, we're gonna figure out how to compensate for these things, because that's kind of a lot of wasted energy. If more than half the energy you got out there is wasted, that's more than half. We gotta compensate for that. Let's look at one more thing. We basically used this side of the triangle over this side. Do you see that? 15.68 watts over 33.6 volt amps. I used this side over this side. So the efficiency, the percentage power factor is a relationship of this side to this side. I told you all these numbers were proportional. The blue ones are proportional to the red or proportional to the purple. So if I can take this number over this number and get 46.7, how about if I took this voltage, the resistive voltage drop over the total voltage? Still this side of the triangle over this side, 56 over 120, you're gonna get the same thing. Or from the very beginning, when I knew 200 ohms and all I figured out was 377 ohms, put those two together Pythagorously, got 426. I could have gone 200 over 426, R over Z. Power factor is this side over this side. And as you notice, the steeper your angle gets, the closer you get to 90 degrees out of phase, the less efficient. The lower it gets, the closer the watts and the VA are, and the more efficient you get. That's getting more in phase. This is getting more out of phase. The more resistant, the more in phase I have, the higher my power factor. We'll discuss that more when we come into class. But for now, this is the concept that we get these. Current is the same throughout. In a series circuit, the other three values, ohms, volts, and power, add Pythagorasly. Use your Pythagorean theorem to solve those. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And use Ohm's law within any component. I'm not going to use Ohm's law from here to here, but within any component, use Ohm's law to confirm your answers. You could confirm any of these. Volts and amps to get power. Ohms and amps to get power. Whatever you want to confirm, you can use that as a double check that your numbers are accurate.